Okay, another thing that's interesting about it, so the slope of the line that you get is equal to the value of the curve at that point itself. And also, if you look at this e to the x curve, the area under the curve, which is if literally if I were to draw this thing and actually somehow physically measure the surface area, when I say the area under the curve, I mean literally if I could like pour a bucket of paint and measure how many square centimeters were underneath the area of this thing up to this point, um, then what I would find is that the area under curve up to this point right here is equal to the value of the point E. So the slope of any point on this curve of a tangent line is equal to the value of the curve itself. And the area under this curve up to this point, all the way from negative infinity all the way up to and including this point is also equal to the value of the curve. So if I go over here so that I have, I'm looking at the number two and then the value over here is e to the power of, of two or something like that, then the surface area underneath would be equal to the whatever the value of the curve is at that point. So the interesting thing about this, and it's really the only function that behaves this way, is that um, the slope of the line or the slope of the curve at any point is equal to the value of the curve itself. And also the area under the curve from negative infinity all the way up to any point you want to pick on that curve, the area under it is also equal to the value of the curve itself. So it's a really special function. And the reason it pops up that way is because the base of this exponential function is a very special number. It's the number that pops out by looking at the natural course of exponential growth. Uh, and so that's, that's Euler's number. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.